individuals I can't answer for everyone but I can answer it for myself um, I knew at a very early age that um, that I want to be a woman and look like a woman so you know um, I was born with a bit of a imbalanced hormones as they say in my body so I went through hormones therapy and um, and also I had um, um, gone under the knives as well so you know a bit of body modification um, but not every trans people would want to go under the knives um, having surgeries or going through hormone therapy so um, yeah I think um, there's 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 a lot of um, meaning of being trans so it's, it's all individual so we just have to to be respectful of uh, each uh, person's um, journey. When it comes to being trans, there's no right or wrong way to be trans. I guess for some people, they want to um, go through medical and social transitioning, but for a lot of transgender people, they don't. So I think when it comes to being trans, you need to decide for yourself what is best for you. For me personally, I knew that I wanted to have surgery, I wanted to take hormone therapy and yeah, I think um, when it comes to your transition and your trans journey, it's up to the individual to decide what is best for them and for the people around to respect and support that. Yeah, so that's what it means to be trans to me. Jen Natalia, oh my goodness. Um, you know, I think it's it's, um, it's rude and inappropriate to ask a trans person what's under and between their legs. So you know, if you actually don't really know this person, I mean, even my close friends actually didn't ask me those questions. To be honest, um, but I know everybody's public is always curious. We are all very curious about things. So, um, but still, I think it's in a bit inappropriate or I think it's just rude to ask a trans person, what do you have in between legs? Um... <sighs> genitalia. Let's talk about genitalia. Or let's not. So I think when it comes to talking about people's genitals being trans or not, you shouldn't do it. <laughs> it's not respectful. It's not anyone's business. Um, and no one needs to know what's between your legs. What's between your legs is for you to know and for anyone that you're sexually active with to know. Anyone outside of that, unless they're a medical professional that is going to support you through having surgery, does not need to know about your genitalia. My business, your business, no one else's business. Surgeries! Okay, um, so... Surgery. Uh, I think for me, I... I'm all for it. I'm all for surgery. If that's something that you want to do, which I've done personally, I've had um, breast augmentation. Um, I've also um, decided that at a very early age that um, I wanted to have gender affirmation surgery. So I've done both of those things. But for me, they were kind of essential to be the woman that I am. Um, and they were really important to me, especially having uh, my gender affirmation surgery. That was really, really important to me. And I did that at a quite a young age. Um, when it comes to discussing those things with other people, um, it's up to you. I think if you feel comfortable talking to other people about it in, um, I guess, a civil and um, respectful way, then that's, that's a good thing. But I think if people are just asking questions like, have you had surgery? Have you had the chop? All these sorts of questions. That's not appropriate. Shut it down. Shut it down. Surgeries. You know, I'm all about the surgeries, um, you know, but I'm always been always has always been afraid of going under the knives or needles, you know, but um, with a bit of um, with a bit of, let's say, practice. <laughs> I had gone through a few surgeries and um, I'm not afraid anymore so I'm always looking forward to another surgeries every time so um, yeah um, I like I like I like to you know as you go a bit older you need to for myself anyway I'm talking about myself um, I like to do a bit of 
modification you know a bit of um botox here and there even though i haven't had botox yet so that would be probably soon i guess um yeah and um i think surgeries is um is individuals um yeah so i do not discriminate that at all um yeah i think i support whoever who wants to go under the knife because of um make them feel good because when you look good you feel good right so um yeah i'm i'm all for it all right pronouns so um it wasn't so formal um until maybe let's say three two or three years ago you know we have to um start telling people about pronouns I, I think it's a good thing it's just that it's a bit foreign for me because you know i'm always always been um uh, been using pronouns she hers and her um you know and but um this um this non-binary and also the non-gender conforming trans people um they would be using theirs they and them so um so um so it does make sense um you have to be a bit more formal now um you know uh, introducing your pronouns at every speech um but um from my experience um i think um if you don't know just ask you know they won't get offended just ask i believe you just um have to um learn their names so you don't have to use their pronoun just call them by their names reach out by their names it's a lot easier i mean that's what from my experience so for me my pronouns are she her hers and i think when it comes to pronouns it's something that is very personal to everybody um and for a lot of trans and gender diverse and gender non-conforming and non-binary people um, it's really important to have your pronouns um, respected and for people to use them. And I think if you don't know someone's pronouns, all you need to do is simply ask what are your pronouns and the person will let you know what they are. I think as well, um, when people purposely don't use your correct pronouns because they're being transphobic or they're wanting to misgender you or whatever the reason they might want to do that, that's not cool. That's not a nice thing to do to people. So, um, yeah, use whatever pronouns you want to use and just make sure that people respect that. But I think as well, it's about education. You need to educate people. You can't expect everybody just to know. So you need to, um, I guess, in a nice way, educate people without being aggressive or defensive about it. And that's the way the world will change and that's the way people will learn. And I think that's, yeah, that's my thoughts on pronouns. Ah, oh, okay, sex life. <laughs> so when it comes to your sex life, that's obviously your business, number one. Um, but I think as well, it can be a bit complicated. It can be a bit tricky, I think, for uh, me, my personal experience when I was dating and having to disclose um, being trans was a hard time to kind of figure out the right time of when to talk about that um, and whether that was something I wanted to discuss at all. Um, but I think what it comes down to is um, it's up to you. It's up to you when you want to tell um, a partner or someone you're dating or someone you want to hook up with, whatever the reason might be. Um, it's up to you if and when you tell them that you're trans. Um, and I think as well, I, I kind of had a bit of a rule for myself that I would um, date somebody and um, let them get to know me as a person and I wouldn't um, have sex with them um, prior to telling them that I was trans. So I think that was the most respectful way um, for me to express that to them but also for them to get to know me as a person. I think when people ask about your sex life, it's like anybody else. Do you ask other people about your sex life? Maybe, probably not. But um, talk about your sex life with people you feel comfortable talking with your sex life about. That's pretty much it, really. Yeah, it's a complicated one, but happy to chat more. <laughs> sex life. Um, you know, um, I'm really open about my sex life, to be honest. Um, I talk about my sex life on my radio show. Um, talk about my sex life with my friends um so um 
it's, it's no secret to be honest but having said that i'm not gonna meet a guy and you know if if i'm in a bar and meet a guy and if a guy asks me um how hung are you and what do you do in the bedroom i mean like seriously i mean <laughs> yeah i won't be telling him about my sex life to him because i just met him you know i just not kind of comfortable if you want to know this is my radio show <laughs> but um yeah I'm, i'm i'm very comfortable talking about my sex life um openly um so yeah i mean in the right place with the right people so my birth name is not gonna tell you <laughs> Um, that for me, that's something I don't tell anybody. The only people um, that know my um, birth name um, are my family uh, and a few of my close friends. But that's something that I don't like talking about. Um, I can say that my birth name was actually, um, I guess, like a unisex name. Is that what you'd want to call it? Um, so yeah, either people that are you know identified as male or female could use my birth name. Um, but yeah, I don't like talking about my birth name. It's something I'm not comfortable to talk about for some reason. Um, I think because I think when you put a face to a name or a name to a face, people will look at you differently. That's just how I feel. So I think yeah, I don't like talking about. Um, My birth name, it actually makes me a little bit uncomfortable. And I think even more so, this is me voluntarily talking about it, but when people ask you, oh, what was your name before? What was your name when you were born? What was your birth name? I'm like, oh my God, I'm not going to talk to you about this. And I actually just say, look, I'm not going to answer you. And I think you need to be strong as well. If you have legally changed your name, and that's something that you're uncomfortable talking about like I am, um, don't talk about it and try to find the strength within yourself to um, not have those conversations with people if that's not something you want to do. But brothers, if you're happy and you're comfortable to share it, then go for it. But for me personally, um, yeah, you're not going to know. <laughs> Birth names. I used to get um, asked a lot when at the early age of transitioning. But now, it's, I can't remember when the last time a person actually asked about my birth name because maybe people just used to Sasha or my nickname Sassy so um um I'm happy to share I'm happy to share with especially with close friends um because it doesn't matter to me I mean I'm, I'm very comfortable as I said I'm very comfortable with myself my own skin so I'm happy to share uh, my birth names but not to some strangers or you know person that i just met and doing a podcast or whatever so yeah i'm yeah not comfortable sharing that to them but happy to share with my close friends trans day of visibility means it's about being who you are be proud of who you are be comfortable in your own skin you know back In Singapore, when I was transitioning, um, most of my peers preferred not to know, to be known as trans woman. They preferred to be known as a woman. So if we meet people or guys, um, and I had to lie and tell those men that I'm a woman. So I was living my life with a lie until I come. I came to to Australia and um, and I feel I was accepted for being who being me um, and and people don't really care about um, your gender to be honest here so um, they see me as me as Sasha um, so I can live my life more authentic here in Australia So, um, so Trans Day of Visibility means about owning your power, owning about who you are, being seen, be, you know, um, yeah, be proud of who you are. So, that's me. So, I think um, when it comes to being trans and being visible, um, that's your choice. I lived stealth. Um, which basically means that I didn't tell people I was trans for 
I would say 10 plus years, so for a really, really long time. And that was something that I was comfortable doing at the time. But also looking back, I realized how detrimental that was to my mental health and my anxiety and um, things like that because you're holding a part of your true identity within yourself um, and you're constantly having to check that to make sure that people don't know, to make sure people don't catch on or spring you or whatever the um, thing might be. So it's kind of exhausting to hold on to that. Um, and I know for some people that's their choice. They want to live self within the community and um, they don't want to be visible. Um, and that's something I didn't either for a really long time. But I think over the past, I'm going to say five, six years, um, I realized that I needed to be more true to myself, that I needed to um, be open and honest and that I needed to be proud of who I am as a woman of transgender experience. And I think I carried a lot of shame and a lot of guilt. Um, and that was not good for me. And I think it's been a slow progress, but I've slowly become proud of who I am. And knowing that I'm unique and knowing that um, I am just like every other woman and I'm not just like every other woman all in one and it's good to be different and it's good to be yourself and it's healthy to be open about who you are and I think what that did for me is it opened a world of opportunities for me um, with my work with my relationship which is a massive one um, I've been in a relationship for five years um, four years four years not five I've been in a relationship for four years um, with my partner and I don't think that it would have lasted this long if I wasn't being open and honest. Um, and yeah, so I think for me, being visibly trans, um, by me being open about it was a choice and it was the right choice for me. And I can respect people that don't want to do that or aren't ready to do that. Um, and I also, you know, I take my hat off to every single person that openly and honestly and proudly says they're trans because yeah we're all unique and we're all beautiful and we all deserve to be happy so yeah happy transgender day of visibility